Uh, what else we got? Uh, the other big booking that was just announced was Edgar versus Holloway for the featherweight title, which is a little weird, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is weird. Go on, say your point. Well, I mean, look, Frank Edgar, he's gotten the fight so many times. Who, who just saw uh, what's his name? Um, Volkanovski. Volkanovski, yeah, Volkanovski just beat Aldo, and I, you know, I, I guess that was the fight that people assumed was going to happen. But uh, apparently, they had already worked out. The Harrington wants to say something so bad. What? He actually on the flight back had to stop over in Chile. He had uh, <sighs> some kind of an infection, and he was left up in the hospital for a while. And apparently, when they couldn't immediately make it, that's when they slid in Frankie. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Harrington, you little bastard. Said what I was going to say. Because you're like, oh, you think, you think, uh, Vulcan obviously should have had it, and then I was going to come in, seeming all smart and connected. Uh, yeah, you're right. He's got some kind of foot disease, and he was in hospital in Chile, uh, or somewhere recently. Um, Listen, Frankie Edgar, he just beat Cub Swanson. He's been around forever. He's paid his dues, and he's a fan favorite. Now, on paper... Yeah, I'd say Volkanovski definitely deserves it over Frankie Yeager. But if you look at the body of work, you know, Frankie Yeager can't be denied. Yeah, he lost to Brian Ortega, you know, but when he fought Brian Ortega, he was supposed to be fighting Max Holloway, if you remember. The Max, something happened, so he fought Frank, uh, Brian Ortega instead, so he was unlucky there. Prior to that, he beat Yaya Rodriguez, he beat Jeremy Stevens, and before that, he lost to Jose Aldo. And then you've got to go back quite a while until his uh, next loss, and that was to Jose Aldo as well. So, you know, I'm not against it. You're right, on paper, after just beating Aldo and after being something like 17-1 and one and unbeaten in God knows how many fights, yeah, Volkanovski's the man to do it. But he's injured, he's in fucking hospital with an infection, and Frank Diego is out there gunning for it. His manager's on social media, he's on social media, you know, and um, I say well done to Frankie. And there's another guy, as you said, uh, like Donald Cerrone, there's some parallels to my career there. And we've got Frank Diego as well. I mean, of course he was... Uh, the 155 champ back in the day but uh, here's another guy to uh, really hit another high mark in his career towards the end of it yeah I mean Frank is the man and you know I remember who was it it was uh, oh Gray Maynard dude oh my god dude when he took that fucking beating off of Gray Maynard um, you know and just th that was like one of those moments one of those moments of old school MMA where it's like god damn it just all heart Frankie's always been that dude so I love watching him in those fights it's just when you have a guy that is you know fucking Volkanovski hasn't lost a fight in years it's just you know he's got one loss on his record ever I don't even know how long ago that was but it was um, you know it's so glaring that he's the next best guy in the division I feel like the UFC they, you know they have they wait for fights all the time so obviously um, you know, whatever. Good for Frank Edgar. Good for his team. How do you see the fight going? I think Max Holloway probably wins this fight um, pretty handily. You know, Max obviously just came off that loss against Dustin Poirier, but at 145, Max has looked basically unstoppable, and Frankie's looked okay. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree. You know, I mean, you, you can't lean against, uh, sorry, towards Frank Yeager in this fight. I mean, I, I like Max Holloway as well. So I was, I was going to say, I wish him the best of luck. But both of those guys, they're great guys. They're awesome fighters, great human beings. So I wish them both the best. May the best man win, you know. So we'll talk about it nearer the time. Um, I'm really excited about that. There's some other bookings as well. Nate Diaz, we didn't talk about this. Nate Diaz booked against... Uh, yeah, Anthony Pettis. But what were you gonna say, Anthony? Oh, I thought you were, you were jumping in. Uh, so yeah, what do you think of that fight? Uh, Anthony Pettis on a little bit of an upswing as well. Um, at 170, they're booked, right? Yeah. But what is uh, the last few fights of Anthony Pettis? Can you look that up? I know we just knocked out Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Uh, prior to that, I think he lost to uh, our boy Ferguson. They were just talking about that. But what was his form before that? Sorry, I don't have a computer in front of me. Here, I'll do that right now. Pettis. All right. So, yeah, here we go. I'll pull up his entire record right now. So he's got the win over Stephen Thompson, lost to Tony Ferguson, a win over Chiesa, lost to Poirier, win over Jim Miller, lost to Max Holloway, 
I mean, all over the place with his weight. I mean, 145 to 170. Uh, and then uh, win over Oliveira. Then three losses in a row. His worst uh, skid of his career to Barboza, Eddie Alvarez, Rafael Dos Anjos. So, I mean, very hot and cold. Um, you know, it, you know, and it's very, I think, I think Nitya has opened up as an underdog in this fight. Um, it's, it's an interesting fight. This is a really interesting fight. And when you see how hot and cold Anthony Pettis is, um, and then you see how long it's been since Nate, how long has it been since Nate Diaz has been in the yeah. octagon? Yeah. Well, 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 here's the thing. I mean, yeah, listen, you know, certainly you can't argue with the fact that Anthony Pettis has been hot and cold. You know, that's a fact. He's won some, he's lost some, he lost a few, he won one or two, he lost a few more. And he's gone up and down in weight divisions. Last fight, listen, he knocked out Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. That's a great win for anybody. You know, I mean, knocking him out, Woodley couldn't finish him, Darren Till couldn't finish him. Lots and lots of people have fought uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and usually he wins, you know, and if he does lose, he doesn't get knocked out. Um, now... Nick Diaz, sorry, Nate Diaz. You know, I mean, this is an interesting situation because I don't know. I mean, when you look at Pettis, he's the better guy, he's the better striker, um, he's more skilled, he's more polished, more athletic, uh, more athletic. Yeah, um, I think this is a dangerous fight for Nate Diaz, especially coming back. He hasn't fought since Conor McGregor, right? 2016. That's three years ago. That's a long time. Now, you know, he's, an, he's a, a pentathlete or whatever he is, triathlons and all that type of stuff. That's all well and good, you know? But that doesn't mean just because someone runs around a fucking track and swims a bunch, they can go in there and fight. Now, of course, he has the mentality, but still, and I say this with respect because I respect both Diaz brothers and what they've accomplished in this sport. You know, time away from the sport can change things. And three years is a lot of fucking time. And Pettis has still been in there the whole time, Lewis. Yeah, that is uh, very true. And whether you're winning or losing, Pettis is training for high-level fights. All of his fights. He, Pettis, you know, he's a name at this point. He's such a, a big star that he never is put into an easy fight. He's never put into a you know a fight with a guy that's not already well known or, or highly ranked. Um, so he's always competing for high-level fights. A lot of the time, five-round fights. Um, and you know, you you've talked about this in the past when you're actually training for a real fight and there's something on the line and they're you know they're you're 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 trying to really legitimately win. It adds a completely other element of motivation so when it's all said and done though i have a difficult time picking against nate diaz and just in general i have a difficult time picking against against nate diaz i think this is a great matchup if you're going to look at what you want for nate diaz it's another guy who's not really 170 pounder he's 155 pounder um who is a really really exciting fun striker nate probably has uh, an advantage on the ground i don't know if he's going to get there he doesn't have the wrestling to to really take down pettis if Pettis doesn't want it to go there. Um, but I don't know. There's something about the Diaz brothers. They have this it factor where you think they're going to lose these striking matchups, and then they come out and they fucking outbox dudes, and you're like, what just happened there? Did Nate Diaz just knock out Anthony Pettis? Holy shit. Mm, no, 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 you're right. And listen, he definitely has the it factor. He brings it each and every time. There's, there's a reason why people love the Diaz brothers. Uh, but one thing, going back to what you said, um, and talking again about the three years away, is that every time you do a training camp, and I'm talking from experience, every time you do a training camp, as a human being and as a mixed martial artist, you learn a lot of things about yourself. And the more times you do it, you tweak it a little bit. You realize, I overtrained in that one. Maybe I don't need to run as much. You realize the next one, oh, you know, my diet wasn't right. I was too weak. I wasn't taking on enough carbohydrates. And then the next training camp, you maybe learn, hold on a minute, I'm doing too much defensive jujitsu. I don't need to do that. I need to be more offensive. And then the next training camp, so on and so forth. You learn about yourself. You learn about your ability to prepare for a fight. And you learn about your skills and what you need to work on. The whole time, Diaz has been away living his good life and good for him and I'm really happy for him Pettis has been in there fighting the best in the world losing to a lot of them as well and when you lose that's when you truly learn about yourself so he's been in there he's been winning some he's been losing some but he's been doing it the whole time so on paper, you've got to lean towards Anthony Pettis here. And I understand that Diaz is as tough as the fuck. Uh, sorry, as uh, tough. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pardon me. That's as the name of the come. episode. <laughs> as tough as they come. But, um, you know, as I say, for, for the reasons I just laid out, I've got to lean towards Anthony Pettis. 
Yeah, you're you're probably right. I'm just a big Diaz fan. I, I would love to see them come back. We've talked about it time and time again about what, what a waste of talent I think it is for them to sit out for as long as they do. And I'd love to see Nick come back as well. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I mean, it's a great fight. It's very exciting. There's no doubt about that. Um, both those guys are super exciting. And I'm a fan of so he walks. I'm just like, oh, God. And then Wilder comes. And it's just like the crowd goes nuts. Comes, looks like a goddamn bejeweled warrior. Mm -hmm. Comes into that thing. And you, I, I just felt bad for Brazil. I know he looked confident, stuff like that. And so we're sitting there. And then they're like, all right, so make sure you're ready, man. Between round one, two. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to be ready. Just get the camera and it, to tell Jim to interview me. And we'll get going in. And so 40 seconds into that fight, that right hand from fucking Alabama, skack! And it sounded like a shotgun went off in that arena, man. It was, I was just, everyone was like, oh my God. And but we're next to his family, so I'm like, yeah. fuck, is he okay? They're crying. And it's like, oh my God. And then he goes to get up. It was brutal, man. Now, as employee of Showtime, that's, be, that's exactly what you want, right? Uh, one of the most brutal knockouts in a long ass time in heavyweight boxing in under a minute where it took Joshua seven rounds to do that. And Joshua has said in previous interviews, hopefully he doesn't beat him quicker than I did because then everyone's going to go, oh, wow, Wilder beat him in this and it took you seven. Well, he beat him 47 seconds where the fuck starched him. Could have been even earlier, but he got a little wild. If you see Wilder lands up right hand, wobbles Brazil, and then starts going wild. And Brazil actually, if you go back and watch that, yeah, so. Brazil, as in this wild exchange, Brazil just closes his eyes, throws a right, kind of hits Deontay. Mm -hmm. And you see Deontay kind of back up yep. and hit his head like this. And then they, and then Deontay holds on. Then they separate. And then it's just like, boom, and this fucking bomb exploded on brazil's face and what makes knockouts even worse like have you ever seen stefan struve who's basically seven foot get knocked out have you seen like a klitschko get knocked out when you're that tall it makes things way worse because it's like a huge fucking giant lumberjack of a tree going goo, 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 like a huge building crashing man it, it was in person it was so violent it was so If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.